All right, YouTube. Today I'm going to walk you through series versus parallel circuits. And I want to talk about the equations for equivalent resistance in each of these circuits. And more importantly, I want to explain the concepts behind why these circuits work the way they do. These equations magically appear in most textbooks, but you won't get too far with these if you don't have an understanding of where they come from. This really isn't all that different than back when you learned about Newton's second law. It seems so simple, just three letters, but then BAM, you're having a good cry over something called an Atwood machine. See, what I'm actually here to do today is to derive these magically appearing equations for you so that I can show you all the concepts behind how they work and how they can and can't be applied. So starting at the beginning, equivalent resistance of a circuit is the value of a single resistor that would draw the same amount of current from the battery as some combination of resistors. Now you'll hear some people even say that equivalent resistance is the total resistance that the battery feels. Now the tricky part in all of this is that we can't just add up all of the resistors within a circuit. That would be too easy. Aspiring physicists everywhere would feel good about themselves and my YouTube channel would die. So let me show you where each of these equations come from. Starting over here with our resistors in series. The first thing we've got to get out of the way, and I can't make a big enough deal out of this, is that Ohm's law always applies to every individual component within a circuit. V equals IR applies to this resistor, as well as this resistor, as well as the battery. But the catch is, V in Ohm's law isn't always the voltage of the battery. In the case of our resistors, it's the voltage used up in that particular resistor. So sure, when you have a single resistor, hooked up to a single battery like we do with our equivalent circuit here, then yes, the V of the battery is going to equal I times R of the resistor. But applying Ohm's law to each of these individual resistors, we get the voltage across this first resistor, we'll call it V1, is equal to the current through this resistor multiplied by its resistance, we'll call that R1. And the same thing holds true for the second resistor. Now the whole point behind a series circuit is that there's only one pathway for the current to travel along. You'll see the wire never splits, which means all the current that comes out of the battery also must pass through this resistor as well as this resistor. That means the current at all points in the circuit is the same. And this is useful on something like a light bulb hooked up to a dimmer switch. The resistance of the dimmer switch controls the current that makes it to the bulb. But going back to what I mentioned earlier, Ohm's law applies to each individual component, but the voltages across the components are not the same as the voltage across the battery. You'll notice any charge which leaves the battery has a certain amount of potential given by the voltage of the battery. Some of that potential or voltage is used up across this resistor and the rest is used up across this resistor. Ultimately what that means is the voltage of the battery is equal to the sum of the two voltages used up across these resistors. So what we've generated now are a series of five equations. These first three are simply applying Ohm's law. And the other two are concepts that are specific to series circuits. And just like in math class, we have a whole bunch of equations with a bunch of unknowns. But don't panic here, this is actually pretty simple. Uh, because all these currents are the same, I'm just going to refer to these as I. You'll notice, if I sub each of these expressions of Ohm's law into this equation down here, and we pretend I didn't write that B there, you'll notice all the currents cancel out. And what are we left with? The equivalent resistance of a series circuit is equal to the sum of the two resistors. And we can perform a similar analysis over here with our resistors in parallel. First, we're going to apply Ohm's law to each component within the circuit. Where the voltage of the battery is going to be equal to the current coming out of the battery multiplied by the equivalent resistance. Then looking at each individual resistor. And you'll notice these three equations are just applications of Ohm's law. So they look absolutely identical to what we came up with over here when we were talking about resistors in series. But now we need to make our analysis specific to resistors in parallel. And to do that, I first want to look at not the current, but the voltage in this circuit. See, anytime charge comes out of the battery, it has a certain potential. And as charge moves along a wire, that potential will not change. 
So the potential anywhere along this wire up here is going to be the same as the potential at the battery. Working our way out of the negative side of the battery, there's zero potential on the negative side of the battery, which means anywhere over here, there's going to be a potential of zero. So looking at the potential across each resistor, you'll notice the potential of the battery is the potential across each of these resistors. Ultimately, what that means is the potential of the battery mathematically is equal to V1 is equal to V2. That's different from when resistors were connected in series and the voltage is ultimately added together to equal to the voltage of the battery. Now, when we had a series circuit, there were no splits in the wire. So all the current that came out of the battery passed through each resistor. But in the case of a parallel circuit, you'll notice right here, the current splits. It either goes this way through R1 or this way through R2. And since that current split, the total current passing through both resistors combined is equal to the current coming out of the battery. We can show that as the current out of the battery is equal to I1 plus I2. So now with some equations written down that are specific to resistors in parallel, we can again substitute these equations in not into our voltage equation, but our equation for current. To do that, we're going to rearrange these functions up here for current. And then sub them in right here. And since all of our voltages are the same, these are ultimately going to cancel out. And we're left with 1 over our EQ equals 1 over our 1 plus 1 over our 2, our equation for resistors in parallel. So ultimately, it's important to remember that when dealing with resistors in series, the current is the same through all components, but the voltages ultimately add together to equal your total voltage. Whereas when dealing with resistors in parallel, the voltages across all components are the same, but those currents add up to be the total current. So I hope you found this discussion of series versus parallel resistors useful. And on that note, that's all for now.